Hi, this is the Coronavirus Daily and I am Ajay Punya. As romantic and as thrilling the idea of work from home sounds, this love affair will end. Before I start with the daily updates, here's sharing some tips and tricks while you and I are in lockdown. Try to build a schedule for yourself and don't just binge watch series on the internet, spread it out over a few days. If possible, have a designated work spot in your home and since you are stuck indoors, take breaks and walk around the house just to stretch your legs out. If you live with family, please contribute in household work. Maybe have a rotational schedule and list of chores for everyone at home, from the kids to the parents and even grandparents. If you live alone, it is convenient to become a slob. Try to not let that lazy attitude take over. Also, social distancing has to be maintained. It is still in fashion. Today is the 24th of March, Tuesday. First, the uncertainties. Now, this is one of the biggest talking points and a huge, huge subject of uncertainty. Does COVID-19 spread by means of paper currency and thus should we avoid using paper currency at all? The answer to this simple question is that WHO does not have any conclusive scientific study linking coronavirus to contaminated currency notes. And perhaps that is why RBI has issued no statement around it. China has been pretty uh, cautious about it though. They've done decontamination and 14-day quarantine of cash. In US, some banks have put the safety question to the Fed and we don't have an answer yet. Looks to me like a wait and watch game. In the meanwhile, just to be safe, you can try non-cash modes of payment. The golden rule? To err on the side of caution. Blacklisted in the US, Chinese tech giant Huawei has extended a helping hand to India in its fight against the virus. From AI and big data to 5G, Huawei is already helping Chinese hospitals and even Thailand in this fight. But we don't have 5G and are unlikely to launch it in the coronavirus desperation era. So the big question is, should India bring the dragon to the backyard? Maybe if there are reasons to believe in its efficiency of imaging diagnosis, remote medical consultations and monitoring a moving object's temperature in real time. The latter may be a big push to India's surveillance dreams, but that's a story beyond the realms of this series. Now, for some of the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good, researchers at IIT Delhi have developed a method to detect COVID-19 that can significantly reduce the test cost, making it affordable for large sections of the society. The NIV Pune is in process of validating it on clinical samples and a Pune-based molecular diagnostics company, MyLab Discovery Solutions, has developed first made-in-India test kit for COVID-19. Right now, we're at seven tests, give or take, per million population. These two should give that score a big push. South Korea, amongst countries that have seen significant deaths due to the virus, has just 1% fatality rate as opposed to to 3.4% global average. So, I spoke of them yesterday, being an ongoing case study of these perilous times. This little success is attributed to the country's effective strategy called trust. For transparency, robust screening and quarantine, unique but universally applicable testing, strict control and treatment. Keep in mind, during the 2015 SMARS, 36 people died and 17,000 people were quarantined in South Korea. So clearly, South Korea has learned its lessons from the past. Now, the bad. Countries across the world are contemplating how to kickstart their economies after the pandemic is brought under control. We had our finance minister announcing some steps today and later on we have the prime minister giving a speech at 8 p.m. And globally, some of the war front ideas include giving helicopter money, which of course, rich countries of the West can afford to do or putting a moratorium on services like EMIs, electricity and rental payments. How, econ how economies get out of this major recession is something only time will tell. But what is amply clear is that the whole point of having a sound government balance sheet is to go all out in times like these. 
countries that are not able to provide a stimulus will suffer not just in the short run, but also in the long run. The lockdown has engulfed much of the country and it's about to get worse. Over the next week or two, the numbers will go north, in part because we waited to act. That surge is expected. Don't despair. You're doing the right thing by avoiding others. But the numbers will eventually catch up with our efforts to ease the burden on health workers who are short of beds, short of personal protection equipment, and short of sleep. Like East Asian countries that have turned the corner, we probably need to do more. Now, the uh, if your anxiety has triggered, I would request you to stop right here. Okay? Now that you're still here, remember Americans complaining about wanting their spring break? Well, the March Madness has come true and some students have tested COVID-19 positive. Now, all of them have returned home across the country. So cross your fingers, America. Amidst the world versus corona battle, there is another battle going on right now. And that is the landlord versus tenant battle. Some countries have completed a one-month lockdown, but India is still in its first month and it is going to get very, very bitter. So here's how one argument goes. There are no jobs means the tenant has no money. The tenant has no money means the landlord doesn't have money to pay mortgage to the bank. But since the bank is just a layer after layer making up a corporation, they can just entangle you in a web of interest in the mortgage payment you do not make. So the fist fight on the ground is now between the landlord and the tenant with the solution, if any, depending on the economic ideology you subscribe to. Which brings me to the most heartbreaking story. Caught in this landlord versus tenant fight and also flat owner versus RWA fight are healthcare workers. The same people for whom we did the hashtag Paanch Paje Paanch Minute acknowledgement on Sunday. The thing is, these people are now being asked to evacuate their homes. After fighting in the hospital, they come back home scarred with the sight of people suffering, scared for their own selves. They are being turned away by landlords and RWAs for the fear that they may have become disease vectors. Seriously? Like, seriously? In the UK, the NHS put a ban on eviction for three months. And looking at the story, some of these doctors have posted online, begging, howling, shouting on top of their lungs to give them personal protection equipments. Are we even remotely ready to take on the Corona army? I don't think so, but I hope I'm proved wrong. Okay, finally, some funnies before I go. So as a boss or teacher, you thought you could have a session over Zoom and get everyone to pay attention? Well, recall the thumb rule of technology. If there is technology, there will be a jugar or a hack. You can find umpteen tutorials about how you can record a short looping video as your background or take a photo of yourself looking particularly attentive, play it and then leave your seat and make your lunch if you like. Goodbye, wash your hands, see you tomorrow.